house of love, knowing how connected we truly are, how inseparable that connection is, we just feel our hearts swell. We swell with the joy, with the knowledge that no matter where we are or what we're doing, we are connected. We're connected to spirit. We are connected to the moment. We are connected to each other. And as this day unfolds, that feeling is so permanent, so perfect, and so aware. Thank you, God. And so it is. And so it is. Good morning. We are an interfaith gathering, a spiritual community that honors all teachings and all spiritual teachers. And now we begin the ceremony that celebrates this oneness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths come for the one universal presence, which we call spirit. Our candle lighter today is Bob! <laughs> And so let us begin. 
begin. It is the season of peace, and today our first candle will be lit for Baha'i. The Baha'i prayer is, be generous in prosperity and thankful in adversity. Be fair in judgment and guarded in thy speech. Be a lamp unto those who walk in darkness and a home to the stranger. Be eyes to the blind and a guiding light unto the feet of the erring. Be a breath of life to the body of humankind, a dew to the soil of the human heart, and a fruit upon the tree of humility. The last candle is the healing candle of love. We invite you in the stillness of your own mind to bring to awareness the names of anyone you wish to be included in this healing flame of love and light. Now that our flames of faith are fully lit, we move forward into our celebration, realizing and reaffirming that all paths lead to God. Let's um, do the fun, this really exciting part that I know everyone tuned in for, our purpose, vision, and mission statements. Our purpose, which is our reason for being, we awaken and inspire love and oneness. I can feel the oneness. Our vision, what do we want to create or become? We are an empowered, uplifting, inclusive community. How included do you feel right now? And our mission, how are we going to do this? We teach spiritual transformation with grace and joy. I just love this place. All right, and now our sacred reading for the day comes from this month's Science of Mind magazine. It's by Sharon Hudson. Settling into comfort in my body, letting go of everything before this moment, I tune into a deeper sense of oneness with life, with God, with spirit. I feel myself grounded in this moment. I move into a sense of perfect balance. I feel a sense of spaciousness in my life and affairs. I'm at peace. I receive love. I abide in love. I am love. It is well with my soul. I bask in this sense of well-being. Thank you. And now for some more music.
Doesn't doesn't everyone just feel so good today? Yeah. Woo! This is gonna be a good day. This is a great day. Hi everybody! Welcome to the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living! Woo! The happiest place on earth! Uh, so if you guys couldn't sense from all the intense joy going on over here. We, there's nothing we love more than spreading this joy, right? Just getting super amped with people. So one of our favorite ways to do that is by praying. And luckily, even though you're not physically here, we can still pray together. It's so exciting because technology is just insane and magic and like way above most of our levels of understanding, which is okay because we just get to bask in the things that it brings us, such as praying through email, even through phone. You can just shoot out a prayer request. It's super easy. You just type in, and then it just goes to every practitioner. Um, so please pray with us, because clearly we love it. We just, it makes us feel like this. So <laughs> please reach out. Uh, we've got some really fun things coming up that I know everybody is just as jazzed as I am about. There's a book study of on the book Being Peace by Thich Nhat Han, Nailed it. Um, that's going to be on Tuesdays starting February 23rd. It's only an hour, so you get to get all this connection and peace and wonder just in an hour a week. Does it get better than that? Well, let me tell you it does. Because we've got new classes coming up too. We've got Foundations for Spiritual Living, which is foundations except Kaleem and Bob are going to be doing it. I know. You just felt that whole, that whole energy rise. That's going to be a powerful class. Um, I just want to ask in the room, even if you can't see the room, we raise your hand if you've taken foundations. All right, leave your hand up if it changed your life. Wow, just so everyone knows, no hands went down just now. Almost all the hands came up, no hands went down. So if you want your life to change for the better, more details to come on foundations. <laughs> also, another class coming up is Revealing Wholeness, which is super fun because we're all whole. And I think that a lot of us forget that. I think we forget that we're these perfect, amazing God beings. So this class is going to be on Tuesday starting March 9th. And that is sure to be amazing. And on that note, after this next song, we've got a speaker who I like to refer to as my own spiritual guru. Right? She, <laughs> she's spectacular. She just showers joy and God everywhere she goes. Amen. So get ready for the one, the only, Linda Steiner! Woo! And now to music. to love and to forgive, learning to let it go and just live. It's how we feel, it's how we know, it's how we think about which way to go. The power to heal.
power to care, to make amends, a move with compassion, being able to bend, the power to be, to laugh and cry, making it all okay, embracing the light, it's how we feel. power to heal, to feel renewed, keep on believing and see it through, it's how we feel, it's how we know, it's how we think about which way to go. The power to heal, to feel renewed, keep on believing and see it through. somebody could hand me the handheld. So I'm going to start with a joke as we figure out half of this. <laughs> I'm having fun. <laughs> Thank you. Now do you have me all? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Woo. All right, so as I said, I don't know what's in the Kool-Aid this morning, but we should sell it. Um, a huge thank you to everybody who is here today to help put on this production. First of all, starting with holding the presents, midnight. <laughs> and of course we have Zoe and Aaron, Judy and Bob are in the house in a big way today. We have Amy and Neil in the back on sound and Facebook. We have Tiffany sending me love. And of course, Claire, our ever steady here to acknowledge everybody who's online. <laughs> And so speaking of that, I'm going to be doing an experiment today. And so part of it is going to be you guys responding on the chat to see if it works. So get ready for that. But I thought I would start this morning with my one and only joke today. <laughs> okay. So a Sunday school teacher asked her children on the way to the service, um, why is it necessary to be quiet in church? Of course, one little girl replied, because people are sleeping. <laughs> so hopefully today we're not going to be doing that. Uh, so the topic today is, uh, is the glass half full or is it half empty? Hmm. Can we change our thoughts? And where are our feet? All right. So let me start with a story. Uh, I think it was a week ago. Yeah, eight days ago, 
my phone buzzed. 6 a.m. I don't normally uh, respond to my phone at that uh, hour of the morning, so when that went off, I considered that kind of a glass half empty moment. <laughs> and then, uh, for some reason, I actually looked to see what it was. It was my neighbor saying, are you awake? Now I consider that kind of a glass half full moment. And then she answered, I answered her thinking that she needed something, right? Half full. She said, um, your car alarm went off. Glass half empty. <laughs> So it wasn't, it, it went on and went off. And so she said, I looked outside, I didn't see anything. But of course, I got up and got dressed to go outside. <laughs> Glass half empty. Even the dog didn't wake up for this. <laughs> so I went outside and I looked at my car and sure enough, the passenger side window had been shattered. Glass half empty. In that moment, I had a conversation with God that kind of went, son of a duck. <laughs> Why me? And I, I just don't have the money to do this. So, glass half empty. But then I went, okay. I need, to, I need to change the path of this. So I consciously stopped what I was doing and went, what the heck? Come on, I don't know what you're doing this for, but I'm open to seeing where you're gonna take it. So that was kind of a glass half full. Now, My neighbor, Anna, and her husband, Spencer, came out to look at the car with me. Now, Spencer ran, now they're military kids, they're MPs, so he went running to the railroad tracks to see if he could see anyone, and, and she turned to me and she said, hey, if you need to use my car today, just let me know. I was like, oh, well, thanks. So that definitely is a glass half full moment, right? So I also noticed that the way the window had shattered, that it was still complete. And so I knew that no one had gotten into the car. So that was definitely a glass half full moment. So I called the police. Glass half empty moment. <laughs> Um, because they basically said, yeah, you can go do a re police report. And I was like, well, don't you even want to take down my address in case it was a neighborhood thing? And she's like, yeah, no. <laughs> okay. So I go inside, and I don't know about you, but I'm one of those people that when it comes to filling out forms online, it's inevitable that there will be a field that does not accept what I want to give it. Or there'll be a button that says submit that does not submit. <laughs> or, or it, I hate online forms. But I was able to get in, find it, and complete it in like less than five minutes. Oh my God, class, half full. Then I went to, I live near Safe Lights, so I went to their website to see what I needed to do. And, um, was able to get into their website, was able to get into their form, and was able to book an appointment for two o'clock to get my window fixed. Like, with no effort. Glass half full. And then, if somewhere on that form, uh, you put in your insurance company. So I put in my insurance company. Well, I get done with that form, and I'm looking through my stuff to find my, um, my policy number for my uh, insurance. The phone rings. I answer it. It's my insurance company calling to say we see that you have a window broken. And I'm like, yes, they're in partnership.
membership with Safelight. So whenever anything happens, it goes directly to them, and they called me. I didn't even need my policy number. And so that, that was a glass half full until I found out my deductible was $1,000, which is half empty. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I didn't have to spend time trying to figure out if insurance was going to pay for it or not, and if it wasn't. Now, I sent a text to my other neighbor, because kind of she's, you know, we're neighborhood patrol. And um, she calls and she's like, do you, need, do you need a shop vac? And I was like, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I haven't, you know, now I'm going to go out and look at the window. And, and I was like, I don't, I don't think I can drive the car because of the way it shattered and it's all over. And she said, oh, I'll, I'll bring it over to you. Let me, let me bring you the shop vac. And I was like, oh, wow, thanks. And, and then she said, do you, do you need any money? I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing yet. So that, absolutely, glass half full. So then um, I call, once uh, Safe Light opened up, I called them because I now have a car that doesn't have a window. And I was hoping that they would let me bring the car over and put it inside because it doesn't have a window. Well, the guy on the phone is like, well, you sound like a really nice customer. Sure, bring the car over. We'll put it inside for you. I'm like, whoa, all right. Glass half full. I text my other neighbor because I was supposed to walk her dog. And she said, just take my car. I was like, really? She's got a tricked out. Forerunner. I was like, okay, thanks. So, glass half full. I get to Safe Light, and there's a gentleman standing in the atrium there, and he um, was also, he had a car window, passenger window, that was broken out. I kind of looked at him and said, Where do you live? <laughs> Three blocks away from me. So, but, and same thing, he could tell that nobody had gotten into the car. So we knew that kids had done this. But while I'm standing there and he and I are talking, this poor guy who's doing the computer to get this guy's appointment, and da 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 da, hits the wrong button, screws up the scheduling, and now cannot fix it. The man's appointment has disappeared. He has put him on for the appointment for the next day. And so he's like, he's kind of like, Oh crap, I don't know what to do, I don't know how to change this. He calls the manager in, and the manager's like, there's no way to change it, there's nothing we can do. You know, our um, you know, our eleven o'clock didn't show, but it's not, you know, it's not enough time or whatever. And I'm like, oh, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, hi. Um, my car is in the parking lot. Do you wanna fix my car now and give him my two o'clock appointment? You would think I had solved world <laughs> hunger. The three of them looked at me like I was brilliant. And they were like, oh my God, that would be great. Thank you. I'm like, score. <laughs> my car's going to get fixed. Um, and I felt good. You know, I was obviously at the right place at the right time to, to help not only get more information about what happened uh, with the windows, but also to help this poor guy out. Because I tell you, if I would have shown up and they would have said to me, oh no, not until tomorrow, I'd be freaking out. My window's gone. But the last piece of this is someone came forward and actually paid for the window. Aww. Completely came forward and out of the generosity of their heart, paid for my window to be fixed. This is a really big glass, half full. This happened because I was willing to admit that I was pissed off and not happy, but to stop myself and kind of go, spiritual experiment. Let me see what I can do by changing my thinking. Can I change this outcome? And I sure did. 
oh my God, next time I'm going to try for my house payment. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, let's, let's try. try. Do you guys want to try an experiment with me about the power of thought? Okay, great. Um, and I'm looking directly at you, Erin. So um, if you have a phone in your hand, you're going to need both hands. So if you can go ahead and um, put your phone down. Okay, this is going to be fun. Um, yes, please. Thank you. So since we need both hands. So thank you, Zoe. So uh, bring your hands, palm up to your face like this. Thank you. Actually, I think I'll do it. Okay. So there are, do you see the lines at the bottom of your palms? There's a line on each side. Do you see that? Okay. Go ahead and line those lines up so that they're equal across. Got it? Okay. Close your hands into a prayer. Now, look at your fingertips. Do you have a hand where one of the fingertips might be larger than the other? Yes. Yes? Yes? Okay, so I want you to take that hand, and I want you to put it in front of your face. The short, yeah, do the short hand. Um, thank you, thank you, Tiffany. <laughs> Use the short hand. Um, and then what I want you to do is I want you to look at your hand and seven times repeat with me, grow longer, 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 grow longer. Okay, put your palms back together, line up that bottom line. Got it? Yeah. Put it into the prayer. Is anybody's fingers yeah. grow? Yes, my fingers grow. Did they? <laughs> is, that, is that crazy? Yes. But wait, let's put it back. So take that same hand, put it in front of your face, and say, go back to normal. 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 Put them back together. Prayer. Are they back? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It is. That is like so cool. And that is the power of our thought in action. Imagine that. We were able to make our fingers grow with the power of our thought. So... We have glass half empty, half full. And then we have the power of our thoughts. So there's one other piece to this puzzle that I want to throw out there to you as um, something for you to keep in your pocket. And I want you to remember this and use this, this this week as you address maybe uh, having a glass half full or glass half empty. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. You can write this down. Find your feet. Find your feet. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I actually carry mine with me everywhere I go. <laughs> Which is pretty, pretty handy if you, if you think about it. And so when you start to be in a glass half full situation, I want you to find your feet. And I want you to remember that truly the only moment that we have in time is this now moment. And that you have the opportunity to change your thinking from glass half full to glass, glass half empty to glass half full. So find your feet. What the heck? What's going on? Consciously connect with spirit in this moment. 
and change your thinking. Now, check this. This was out of a Science of Mind magazine. When we face tough times, and we all will, we can see a problem or we can see it <clears throat> as an opportunity. The universe doesn't demand suffering. Remember that divine guidance is always, always available. Spirit always responds, no matter what card we are dealt, we have the ability to move beyond the circumstance. Find your feet, consciously connect, and expect the best. So when you're facing glass half empty or half full, um, I also have some other advice. Uh, this one came from the president of the court council, Marion, and she was like, Linda, it's a container. Change containers. <laughs> if it's half full, change containers. Thank you for that one, Marion. <laughs> but then Reverend Don, you got to love Reverend Don. I was telling him, and his advice is this. If your glass is half empty, go over to the sink and fill it up. <laughs> it's that easy. So, ah, just want to thank everyone for being here today and, and thank Midnight. Um, and just remind you and invite you. This week, try it. Your thoughts are powerful and they create. So, what are you going to create this week? I look forward to hearing. Namaste. Namaste. And now for our prayer treatment, we have practitioner Bob Corbin. <laughs> So let's take a collective breath together as we simply relax and recognize that power and presence that is always with us, in us, through us, around us, and expressing as us. We realize that we are one with this power, that we are masterful creators. So I simply take this moment realize and recognize that everything that we need is already within us. We have the ability to create perfect health as we realize that we are all children of one perfect God and that this power flows through us at all times. We are an expression of perfection. As Zoe stated earlier, we are amazing children of God. And so I simply know the perfection that exists within each and every one of us. Each one of us have perfect health. Each particle of our body works together in perfect balance and harmony as we express and outpicture that perfection of what we truly are. I know that we live in a prosperous world and each and every one of us has all that we need. I am just so grateful for this beautiful moment, this co-created moment right here and right now, and for the awareness of this truth. For I know that as we allow ourselves to realize this connection, that we are connected to the divine, and through that we are connected to one another. So any appearance of relationship issues, it is simply God, loving God. We are beings of love, created from love, through love, we are love. And so I know that all relationships reflect this beauty that resides within us. And I am just so thankful for this moment and for this awareness and for 
the awareness of the power of my word, the power of my thought to create. And so I simply release this word into that beautiful, wonderful law that only and always says yes, knowing that this is already done. We release it, we let it go, we let it be knowing that all is God and all is good. Please help me anchor this by saying, and so it is. of love is where you take me living my life from a place of love is where i'll be i'll be standing in the light ready to forgive reaching out with courage and having strength to say i'm living my life from a place of love Life from a place of love is where you take me. Living my life from a place of love is where I'll be. I'll be standing in the light, ready to forgive. Reaching out with courage and having strength to say, I'm living my life from a place of love. thrive oh yes i'm blessed more each day oh i'm taking giant steps and the feelings here to stay living my life from a place of love is where you take me living my life from a place of love is where i'll be i'll be standing in the light ready to forgive reaching out with courage and having strength to say i'm living my life a place of love, yeah, I'm living. Oh no, that past won't keep me down, oh no, even after the pain, oh, I'm standing tall today, and you know I'm here to say, oh yes, I watch my future thrive, oh yes, I'm blessed for each day, oh. And the feeling's here to stay Living my life from a place of love Is where you take me Living my life from a place of love Is where I'll be I'll be standing in the light Ready to forgive Reaching out with courage And having strength to say I'm living my life from a place of love Yeah, I'm living His courses are our beloved Susan Breakall and Mark Pearson, all the way from Oregon, um, joining us with music today. I just feel so blessed that uh, we have so many people in our lives who will step forward and uh, help to make these days go smoothly and, and bring the point home. So yes, I am living a place of love. And so I just want to take a minute to acknowledge some of you who are out there. Um, Shelly Jean, she's in my class. Uh, Beulah, who's out in the Yukon. Keith, Heather Eldridge is watching with us today. Cynthia George, Robert, Judith Mack, I could use a good lunch. <laughs> Angela, <laughs> uh, Kim Stoltz, Trevor, your daughter is out there watching. That's wow. awesome. <clears throat> <clears throat> and of course, our beloved Joan, um, Reverend Linda, all the way out in. Uh, Montana, thank you. I'm always trying to put her in Wyoming. Um, <laughs> Tanya, uh, Lynn and Mary in our home. So, yeah. Hi, Lynn and Mary. 
And guess who else is home? Cindy Hensley. Woo! Love it. And Re Reverend Don made it back from the cabin. So hi, Reverend Don, Rochelle, and Bobby Taylor. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for tuning in with us today. It's very much appreciated. I hope the experiment uh, well, went well on your end. I'm anxious <laughs> to find out from Claire if there's any comments. Um, but this is the time where we get to step into our gracious giving. This is the time where we get to, to place our hand on our heart and give thanks that, that we have a place to come every Sunday. We have a place that lifts us up and brings us joy and a place where you can always turn to. So please help me. Uh, with our blessing, repeat with me, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. And so it is. And for our affirmation, thank you, Judy. Let's see what comes up today. Okay, here we go. When I open my heart, my mind is free. Aww. Aww. Awesome. <laughs> and now back to some amazing music. Yeah. All right, everyone help me out here. I feel rich. I feel strong. I feel confident. I feel rich. I feel strong.
Do we, is our glass half empty or half full? Are we allowing God to work through others? We are one. So as we allow God to work through others to help us, that also allows God to work through us to help them. That was a beautiful example today of the circulation of goodness. So we all have the choice to make, to change our thoughts. We are creative beings. In this, in this now moment, we are creating. What are we creating? We are creating a life that works for everyone, a world that works for everyone. So through our heart-centered consciousness, with this connection with God, we simply allow. We open our hearts and our minds and allow God to work through us and as us. For we are beautiful children of God. And for this, we simply honor this with this connection. Thank you, God. And so it is. So it is. Woo! To fill up my glass. To fill up my glass.